If you go to the resources section, you should find a file called Double Pendulum Create. Now if you open that up, it should take you through to this page here. So this is the code for the Double Pendulum written in vPython. So what I'll do is I'll run this first of all. So in order to run this, if I bring this down a bit, in order to run it, you click on Run the Program. And let's see what we get. So you can see here that we've got the same output here as we did for the MATLAB simulation. So if you go and compare this with MATLAB, you'll see this exact same shape. And we can see the fulcrums here. L1 is here and L2 is here with mass M1 and mass M2. So let's go ahead and we'll look at this in the vPython. So I'm not going to go through all the detail, all the script in detail, because if you haven't used vPython, it won't mean much to you. But I do suggest if you're interested to have a look at vPython, because it's really quite simple and intuitive to code in it. So we start off with the canvas. So this is just the size of the simulation canvas, which we've just seen a second ago. We've got the length of the inner pendulum L1 is 2. The length of the outer pendulum is L2 is a value of 1. We've got the red, little red sphere. So this is the, the fulcrum of the double pendulum. We'll have the M1, which is the, the inner uh, mass. So it, again, it's in blue, this little blue circle. And we'll also have the actual, um, uh, it's called a cylinder. So it's the actual um, yellow line joining the this point here the um, fulcrum with the first um, mass M1. So in effect this here is our L1. And we've got our M2 which is the outer mass, again it's in blue, and we've got the connecting rod between the M1 and M2 which is co called pendulum 2. So the mass of M1 is 2 and the mass of M2 is 1, and the gravity is 9.8. Now I've set up the angles here, but I've written out the angles here uh, in order to get them into radians, we multiply by pi and divide by 180. So this is 180 degrees, but in radians you multiply by pi and divide by 180. So that will give us a pi radian, which is 3.14. And we've got the angle theta 2, and again it's sitting at 90 degrees, so it's going to be 90 times pi per 180. And the value for omega 1, the initial condition is 0, and the value for omega 2, well I set that up at 0 0.75, because that value there, in effect, is like an initial impetus to get the, the system started. And if I use a value of 0 0.75, it gives me roughly the same output that we get whenever we looked at the simulation in MATLAB. And we've got the now the positions M1 and M2, of for the, um, the the masses and also the position of the pendulums here, so initial starting points. So this is a little section of code here really that gets us started on this. So we're going to have uh, t equals zero, and we're going to have an an, uh, an increment of uh, dt which is equal to 0 0.001. So let me just bring the rest of this up. So I've just moved this up a bit here. So we've got the t is equal to 0. That small increment t is 0 0.0001. And we've got the trail here. So this just uh, adds on the trail to the uh, the outer pendulum, mass m2. And we set up the time limit here. So while t is less than 5, so that's less than 5 seconds. And we've got the rate at which the uh, actually refreshes here. And we've got our values here for our A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we've got our value here. Now, I've called it the uh, omega 1 dot. So omega 1 dot is this here. So I've seen these previously. And we've also got, this is the really uh, the interesting part here. So we create a new value for theta 1 by taking the old value of theta 1 and adding on the, uh, the value of omega 1 times the dt 
Okay, so that's going to give you a new value of theta 1. Now we do the same for theta 2, and we also do the same for omega 1 and omega 2. And then we work out the new positions. So this is the similar to just what we've got up here. We just work out the new positions, and then we add on our small increment time t plus dt. So this is the end of our derivation of the double pendulum using the calculus of variations and the Lagrangian method. It's also the end of our Calculus of Variations course. Now, I hope you've enjoyed taking this course. I've enjoyed teaching it. It's a fascinating subject. I'll also be doing a second course called the Calculus of Variations 2, which will cover the second variation. So thank you very much for taking the course. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it kickstarts some further study in the Calculus of Variations. Thank you and goodbye.